Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your credit score. Yeah. No. But is there any other questions you've got before we move on to quiz? Anything else that you might have thought of that you're sort of wondering? No? Nothing? Okay. Well, we know where we are. If you, if you find that you need to ask anything, please, please come and ask. So, just really want to touch on careers as well, because I'm sure um, that's really at the forefront of, of your mind there. Um, you know, I do quite a few sort of um, careers events where we go around um, different schools. Now, what you see in the high street is a very, very small, small part of HSBC, and I just really, really want to make you aware of that. Um, I and mean, we have Birmingham now, we have Canary Wharf that are, are kind of what I would call our head offices. So they do all the jobs for us that we don't do in a branch. So we don't actually have that many people work back office now because we have departments that are doing that for us um, and all, all our sort of paperwork we scan on and then that is then dealt with by them. Um, we have our website, I don't know if anyone's been on to the HSBC website, and I have just um, got a couple of handouts here if anyone wanted to see that. But that is our website. If you go right to the bottom of our home page and just click on careers, you've got this. Now that includes application hints and tips, um, hints and tips about CVs, it's meet our people, it shows job profiles. Um, my job, is, it comes up on there, tells you what I do. Um, there's careers events, it tells you what careers events you can go to, um, you know, and, and what levels that you can come in at, and that is how to apply. Uh, could be work experience, could be apprenticeships, um, could be graduate jobs. Um, now we, um, there is a graduate entry level after uni, um, and we have hosted um, some of those graduates placements. You have four placements over uh, for six months don't you mm -hmm. um, and then after that two year period you would then apply for the job having had the experience in the different zones of the bank um, that you think you might want to go to because don't forget you know you've got digital digital is massive um, everything we do um, we are now encouraging customers to actually apply in the branch but on a computer themselves we're just there to assist them you, we make the card, someone makes that card. We've got um, payment departments, um, we've got audit departments, anything you could think of has to be done by someone. Um, and many of these jobs are done in either London or Birmingham. I mean, I used to work with someone who now works in Hong Kong. And obviously we're part of a, of a global bank. The, the opportunities are absolutely massive. Um, you know, you, you, as I said, such a huge spectrum of what you can do. So this is why I've brought Paul here, because he's worked in London, haven't you? You've been and seen lots of different things, so just so that you can yeah. give a bit of insight. So afternoon, my name's Paul Hawley, I'm, so I'm the area director for Essex, so I look after the 16 HSBC sites um, that are across, in HSBC's terms, Essex, there are three or four others that form uh, East London in our eyes, but that is another story altogether. But anyway, I joined HSBC 15 years ago, um, so uh, like Helen said, I started off in our old head office before Canary Wharf was built, um, which was in the city of London uh, called Poultry and Princess Street. So Canary Wharf is our global head office, like Helen just said, so there's 8,000 staff who work in that building, um, but we're about um, to change our retail and commercial banking head office to Birmingham. So um, in the, you may have seen that HSBC is now HSBC UK. I don't know if you've noticed that on our advertising, etc., and on the branch in Colchester. But the UK arm, the head office, is going to now be in Birmingham from next year. So um, it'll, we are going back to our heartland, effectively, because for many of you probably won't remember this, but we were called Midland Bank before HSBC purchased us. So one of the key things I think that's um, a massive success within HSBC is the fact we're in 70 countries around the world. So, um, like Helen said, it's, uh, many of the colleagues I started with are in Hong Kong, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, or North America. Although our North America arm is uh, relatively small, it sits mainly across um, New York and the West Coast. Um, but we do have banking operations in many of our countries around the world. Um, we also offer across all the suite of banking products. So we have the retail banking, commercial banking, private banking, which is for our customers with three million pounds or more. Uh, in assets and then we also have global banking and markets which is I think what Mr Wallace mentioned earlier which is our investment banking arm so they are now separate to HSBC UK so you would remember or you might have heard your parents talk about the global financial crisis of 2008 so that 
I'm sure you might have learned about this in economics anyway, but obviously that caused major problems for the economy globally. And so um, in the last couple of years, what the government and the FCA have requested is that we split the bank from our investment arm, which is the global banking and markets, from our retail and commercial arm to protect the likes of you, your parents, your family, your family and friends, etc., uh, in case anything else happens like that in the future. Um, any questions around careers in HSBC? The, there's, um, for, for now, there's, um, you can do work experience, which you can apply for uh, in, our, in any of the branches and the head office via the career link. Helen's already mentioned the graduate scheme, um, so you can apply for different parts of the bank, whether that's commercial or, or retail, where you do different placements in different areas. So retail banking, you would do a placement in the branch with, say, Helen and Justine, but you'd also spend six months potentially in product management, so how we design our products going forward, maybe digital, maybe First Direct, so you may have heard of them, so they are a non-front-facing bank, so they're totally internet and um, telephone-based bank, um, or you might do something in, in a completely different department altogether. But any questions about careers within a company like HSBC? I've got one. What about what about are there, are there still people who go out and lend money to biz, local businesses? Yeah. Is that a is that a yeah. career that people do? Yeah, so that's our, that would form part of our commercial banking. So we have business specialists within the branch. They deal with companies um, who turn over their business turnover is up to around a million pounds. Um, and then we have local business managers who deal with businesses between one and three, four million pounds. That sort of area. And then we have our commercial and corporate banking for anything between a business from sort of five million above up to hundreds of million pounds. So global businesses, PLCs, the supermarkets that you go and buy a lot of your food from, they will obviously have commercial banking. So it all varies on the size of the business turnover usually, or complexity of the business. So um, it could be that you're a lower turnover, but your complexity of business means that you need a relationship manager. And the costs because all, whereas all your personal banking is free of charge in the UK, business banking is charged on the whole. Um, many of the banks will give an eight, 18 months free banking at the beginning for new businesses, but after that, businesses pay. So every time you pay in £20, you get charged a percentage of that £20 to pay in cash as a business customer. Whereas with a personal customer, obviously you pay in your £20, your £20 lands in your bank account. So the charging and the structure depends on the size and, and what the business is looking to do. But yes, there are still managers. What makes a more complex business? Um, it, it really varies on um, their requirements. So if you take um, a company like, let's say, a Vodafone or something like that, they are going to have um, a huge volume of customers. They're going to be taking a huge, like, large transactions every month. They're going to need to be a direct debit originator. So um, to take, so with a to be a direct debit originator, you have the authority to take any amount of money out of your customer's bank account on the basis of a signature authority they've given you, say, three years ago. Um, so you've got to then prove your trustworthiness. You've got to prove that you've got enough back office staff to manage that all. Uh, it could be they're going to have overseas customers. That globally, they're going to need to transfer money abroad. Um, so all of that complexity. Whereas if I am Paul Holding working for the grammar school um, as a contractor or as a, let's say as a sub-teacher, all it is is the grammar school paying me once a month my salary and that's it. So my business is going to be really straightforward, whereas if I'm managing, the more people I have, the more global interactions I have, the more complex potentially it becomes. Um, and, and it depends on which countries you're dealing with. So you've probably heard of North Korea at the moment, they're not the most loved country in the world. So if I have dealings with North Korea, well we're probably not going to bank you at all if you, bank, if you have dealings with North Korea, but as an extreme example, that sort of thing could cause complexity as well. Um, does HSBC take people out of university? And if so, what universities do they look like? Take them out of any university globally. I've, I mean, I've, I interview people consistently um, who have uh, come out of different universities. Um, I guess the answer to the question is it depends on the market at the time. So if I look at the financial crisis, between sort of the, uh, the years of 2011 and 2015, every single person I interviewed had a degree and from some brilliant universities. But the market, the job market was that difficult that graduate placements came down because banks and other businesses couldn't afford to take on as many graduates because it was too high a risk. So then a lot of the graduates became our cashiers. And so everyone had a degree um, and a lot of them started as cashiers and then they worked their way up through the bank. Um, and they've still gone on to have fantastic careers and they've moved on quickly, but they were taken on that basis. 
prior to that, most of our graduates went into the grad, most of the people with degrees went either into the commercial side of things, maybe our corporate, maybe the uh, global banking or markets. Not as many came into the retail banking cashiering, which is your, often the sort of starter position. But we've taken a degree, like the students in from um, India, from all over, Singapore, Hong Kong. Do you I mean, do you have any specific universities? Or is it no, Singapore? any, no, no, we're not, we're not, so it's not like America where we only take from Harvard or Yale or anything like that, so. Um, it doesn't always have to be a certain degree, or I don't think you do. No, not at Just all. Just the fact that you've actually passed that. Degree. I think it depends, because I said, Helen said earlier that we do everything. So if you want to be an accountant, you can do that with HSBC. If you want to be in community project work, you can be, so it, the degree would be different depending on where you want to go mm -hmm. uh, within HSBC. Yeah, law, I mean, there's legal team. We have, they're based in Birmingham. We have a legal team. We have the investment banking arm, so that would probably be around an economics, maths, that sort of thing, depending on where you are, um, trading, etc. Uh, we have foreign exchange team in Paris and all over the world, so multi multilingual is also really, really helpful if you have that sort of extra language piece. You can, the, so for someone like myself who struggles to speak one language, um, I'm limited to uh, certain countries of the world. Like Hong Kong is one that a lot of Brits go to because it has a huge UK expat community, so being able to speak either Cantonese or Mandarin isn't such a need, whereas if you work in Paris, French is going to be a necessity to work there because you know, that's the local dialogue that they're going to be going for. Uh, I mean, in Canary Wharf, there's 8,000 jobs, and there's loads of different departments. So it would all depend on which department you're looking to get into within that. So um, trading is going to be a competitive market, and it's going to be quite a cutthroat market, without a lie. I mean, you either usually you're either good at it or you're bad at it, from experience of people I know and colleagues who have worked at it. Um, so often you either do really well and you show promise, or you crash and burn, and then you maybe look for something else that is, is more suits your personality because it's that's quite a, a specific, but. Um, yes, there is different jobs have different competitiveness, things that are really popular. At the moment, we have a huge, um, around our, how we assess customers in regards to their um, financial credits, their, how their background, where their, where their history is and all that sort of thing. That's within commercial. We're having to do a lot more work around the background piece, fraud. That's very, very, usually quite very popular and people really want to, so it can be more difficult to get into. But it varies from time to time because different themes at the moment um, around what we call customer due diligence and understanding our customers is massive. So there's a big influx of people going into that area at the moment. So it varies time to time. But. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop if that's all right because I heard the bell and they've got to go and reach. Yeah. Should we just say thank right. you once again? Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs>